We're here with uh, Heather Owens, and most people know her by her number, 44, yes. and also by your nickname, Red. Yep. Tell us a little bit how you got the nickname. The nickname is actually quite interesting. I was, it, we were at the game in uh, Pullman my freshman year, and we were in warm-ups, uh, yeah. and I used to be right by Kate Pay <laughs> in the uh, lay-in lines. And a bunch of people from my high school had come to the game because Moscow, Idaho is just seven miles from Pullman. And they had this huge banner and it said O-Dog for, you know, Owen. And I was known as Big O and O. And Kate turned to me and just goes, well, that's crazy. It should be Red Dog. And that was it. It stuck. And oddly enough, I hadn't been called Red until I got here. So a lot of people thought it was Red because of your hair. Yep. So it had absolutely nothing to do with that at all. Well, I'd say a little bit, but, you know. Well, you played in 19, well, you graduated in 1998, and you uh -huh. played the four years before then. Uh-huh. And you certainly had a cast of characters around you. Yes. Um, what was the most memorable moment that you had of that group? That group, gosh, there were many. Um, on the court, the most memorable game to me, I think, was my sophomore year. I think we played Tennessee here. Mm -hmm. It was an absolutely electrifying game. Um, that that was great. All the final fours obviously were great. And off the court, we had so many memories. I don't I don't even know where to begin. Well, but, certainly Vanessa's the biggest character on yes. there. Yes. What is the most outrageous thing that she ever did that you can tell us about? Um that I can tell you about. That limits things. But <laughs> I, think, I think when Vanessa and I were roommates, uh, our senior year, and she was actually a class ahead of me, but injured her knee and then yeah, redshirted. redshirted. So I remember that she uh, bought two frogs and decided to have them as our pets, and I absolutely <laughs> hated them. And they, she fed them live crickets, and one morning I woke <laughs> up and there was a frog and it had gotten <laughs> out of its cage, and you know, the thing was only that big, but God, I just hated them. <laughs> so that that was kind of her outrageous animal story, I guess. Oh, I bet she was just a lot of fun to live with. She was great. She was she was great. Unfortunately, she injured her knee that year as well, and that that was rough. But mm -hmm. we, we had a good time. Well, tell us a little bit about your playing experience. I mean, you were um, Idaho State Player of the Year for two mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and uh, you were uh, an All American, mentioned as an All American, mm -hmm. and then you came here to Stanford. Um, when you were looking at schools, what other schools were you considering? I knew I wanted to play in the Pac-10. I knew that since I was uh, probably in junior high, going to games at, at Washington State with my dad. Um, seriously considering? No, no other schools. Mm -hmm. um, I took visits to Colorado and UCLA, but when all was said and done, I knew I wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. And had you ever come to one of Tara's uh, basketball camps? I did. I did. I was actually talking about that with someone the other day. And I can't remember the year I was here, but I do remember that uh, Sharman Smith and Kristen Fogel were also at that particular camp. So it was, uh -huh. it was a lot of fun, and I you know, met two of my future teammates. Future teammates. So yeah. A lot of people that go through the camp end up coming here. So. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. So you even knew that early on that, that Stanford was the place for you? I think so. I didn't tell anyone that, mm -hmm. but I knew kind of deep down that this is where I wanted to be. And as you look back at your basketball experience here at Stanford, you know, how would you rate it in the scale from like one to ten? Ten. Ten? Absolutely. Absolutely a ten. There were some... There was no hesitation there. You no, just said ten. Ten. There were some uh, tough times, some down times, but overall a ten, and I would do it in a heartbeat again. Well, tell us about your major. I was a political science major, mm -hmm. got a sociology minor, um, and then went on to law school, so it, it proved well. Yeah, but didn't you make a stop somewhere in between there on the professional I did, I okay. did. I uh, was originally drafted by the ABL, Portland Power, and uh, never actually attended their training camp due to mm -hmm. financial constraints, but ended up on playing... On the ABL side. Yes, on the <laughs> ABL side. Yeah, I know that well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ended up going to France and playing half a season over there and then spent two seasons with the Washington Mystics in the WNBA. What, what was international ball like? A, a lot of times we hear that, um, you know, the Americans are kind of spread out on all the teams. Mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, true? Yeah, I believe this was the rule when, when I was playing. You could have two Americans per team, so they definitely had to spread them out. 
Um, and then I, I don't know the limit on foreigners, but there was a different limit on foreigners, and foreigners are different than Americans. So uh, there was one other American on my team. Um, we had a real fun time together, great teammates. Uh, they all spoke English pretty well, so we didn't need to learn French, mm -hmm. which was nice. Um, it's a great experience, though, in terms of living on your own, living in a different culture, figuring out how to just live and then do your job, which is playing basketball, obviously. Yeah, and even be able to get around. Yes. You know, which yes. is a little bit different in Europe than it is over here in the United a States. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little things trip you up now and then. What was your coach like? Uh, he was a great guy. He spent some time over here uh, coaching with uh, the men's team at Marquette. Okay. So he had a real good feel for American basketball, spoke great English, and just, you know, a few weeks ago I got a Christmas card from him in the mail. So oh, we wow. still keep so in touch. Still in touch. Yeah. That's great. Yep. So uh, as you think about your experience, would you s suggest to other players to go ahead and go over to Europe, or you think they should just stay here in the United States? No, I think that the European experience is, is definitely something people should do if given the opportunity to, for two reasons. One, to get the playing experience um, and, the, and the international play. And then two, it's, it's a cultural experience, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. And how did you find the game different in terms of physicality and in terms of, uh, you know, how, how the teams played. In France? Yeah. God, you're making me think on this one. I'm um, sorry. No. <laughs> um, I remember it being not as physical. Because um, it was more spread out on the floor? Definitely. More outside shooting? Uh, yeah. And, and post players that were more multifaceted. They weren't just low block players or high post players. They were out on the perimeter could handle the ball fairly well, not as um, not as big, not as tall. Mm -hmm. um, but that that again, that that was just my experience. So I don't know if I can generalize all of Europe off that. What position did you play over there? I was definitely a center, as okay. opposed to here, I could swing to a four and be more of a power forward. Right, and face the basket. Mm -hmm. So over there, you played basically, you know, played somewhere. on the block, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of isolation stuff, uh, and and high post stuff. Okay, and then how'd you get from France over to the Mystics? Um, well, flew, of course. <laughs> uh, let's see, I came back uh, from France, and I was a free agent in the WNBA, and I knew the only way you know, to get in was going to be to get into a training camp. So I went to the open tryouts that these teams put on. The combine? No, oh, and it, no, it was open tryouts just, it for was each individual each team. team. Okay. So the two that I was invited to were with New York mm -hmm. and then D.C. So I went to New York's, and New York's open try to remember, was just throw the ball out and play. There was no organization. It was a pickup game, and it was just people I had never really encountered anywhere, mm -hmm. which was kind of funny because you think, like, well, God, are they really going to take anyone from this? Mm -hmm. Took the train down to uh, D.C., right. and... Theirs was much more organized, and I actually ended up running into Kate Pay and Anita Kaplan were there, and I want to say Sharman Smith was there. Um, so we all ended up trying out there, and that one was more organized and something we were more accustomed to. And when that one was said and done, I had you know played my way into the training camp, which didn't mean much of anything, but at least I was in a training camp to try to make a team. Mm -hmm. And then somehow I got through the training camp and got on the roster. Okay, so... At that point, Nancy Darsh was the uh, yeah. coach there? Nancy so. Darsh, Melissa McFerrin, yeah. And who were some of the other players that were on the team? The the headliners at that time would have been Shemequa Holdsclaw from Tennessee, Nikki McCray from Tennessee. Um, those are the two that, those were our big, you know, superstars. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you look at Nancy's style, how mm -hmm. would you compare Nancy's style as a coach? Because we all know her from Ohio State mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to Taurus. Very similar, um, and I think that's why I was able to find a niche there to fit in. She's, a, she's an academic. She's um, a, a teacher of the game, mm -hmm. and um, very similar to Tara in that you know she's not a screamer. She's, she's an intellectual. She walks you through it, wants to make sure you understand it and understand why you're doing things, and, and I definitely fit with that. Yeah.